Hello Internet, this is Scott with Scott's Garage standing in my garage. In this video I will show you how I made these floating garage shelves that allow you to store items on the shelves but also there's space behind it so you can store larger items, 4x8 sheets of plywood, whatever, so you can do both. Keep watching. Welcome to Scott's Garage. Welcome literally to my garage. Whether it's working on a daily driver or a project car, or a project around the home, or the yard, or the patio, a pallet project, Scott's Garage is a place for do-it-yourselfers. Everything is do-it-yourself. Welcome to my channel. Okay, here's what my garage looked like a week ago. It's a small garage for everything I do in Scott's Garage. It's very cluttered, yet I have some dead space. I can see some shelves up there. Uh, and, you know, likewise, you know, looking at the other side there, uh, there's some dead space, and I think I'm going to begin in this left corner, and I need to come up with smarter shelves than these. I'm going to begin here. In the past, I've used graph paper and a pencil in coming up with designs. I decided, though, to invest some time learning Fusion 360. There's a free version. It's an incredible uh, program, so I thought I would uh, give a crack at it. And for those of you who are CAD experts, uh, cut me some slack, but... Uh, Here's what I came up with my, my first attempt. Okay, I want to save space and have uh, extra room for storing things. So these are going to be hanging shelves, hanging from the ceiling. They're not going to go down to the floor. Here's the, the exploded view. And the, the, the front will be 48 inches wide and then seven shelves a foot apart. And then the side view here, the very top, there's a cubby hole for extra material. It's going to hang between the rail in the garage where the garage door goes up. Um, and the wall, and then it's raised uh, through the ceiling uh, to the rafters. And now I just I decided to get all the materials at Lowe's and went with MDF, medium density fiber board, 5 8 inch thick. I'm gonna have Lowe's cut most of the cuts here. It's very heavy. Here I'm, I'm unloading it, and again, most of the cuts were, were made there. Um, in, in addition to the MDF, I, I purchased a quarter inch 4 by 8 sheet of plywood uh, that I'm, I'm uh, hauling here. And overall, um, it's the way to go. Have them make most of the cuts so that you're not hauling around these really heavy sheets of, of uh, MDF. Okay, I made my cuts according to plan. So the end caps, I, I, I cut 5 8 inch gaps about halfway through and laid the shelves in place. Uh, I was able to use a staple gun uh, a nailer, Harbor Freight, uh, to put it together. It went, it went together beautifully. I also used uh, some glue uh, for this, some Gorilla wood glue which worked very well. I decided to add a top piece. It's not in the plans, but just thought it would make it a little bit more stable. And on the, on the inside, I also drilled two holes to help better guide the threaded rods. Okay, everything came together exactly like I thought it would. It's time now to paint. I'm going to use cabinet paint. This is Velspar Cabinet and Furniture Oil Enriched Enamel. So the oil enriched makes it uh, so that you have less brush strokes and that. I am going to uh, brush it on. And the color that I've chosen for this garage makeover uh, is this. It's called Rock Bottom. Um, you can see it there, but it's just a, it's a nice like stone gray. And I think it'll work well. Let's get painting. Okay, I began painting it. It was a little bit too windy outside though, so I decided I better shut the garage door rather than dust blowing in. I ended up using a, a, a foam brush and a roller. A combination of the two seemed to work really well uh, for this. Really love this paint. Uh, it, it, is, it does hide all the brush or roll strokes. I think it's because of the oil in it. It did make it smell though uh, pretty strong, so I did wear a respirator uh, in, in applying uh, the paint. Also, I uh, love the color. It should work well for uh, all the things that I, that I create uh, for this makeover. It needed a second coat, so I'm, I'm adding a second coat here. And again, I can't say enough about this paint. Uh, it's worth a few dollars more to get the oil in the paint, and it, it definitely hid the brush strokes, as I said before. Okay, here I'm laying out the, the plywood. I had to cut about a foot off of it. Um, the ply, plywood is four by eight, obviously. The shelves are just a, around seven feet, so I cut a foot off. 
and just uh, prepping it, I had to uh, just kind of redo that one edge. It was sticking out a little bit. So I used my cordless circular saw uh, cobalt to cut it, and it did a beautiful job. Okay, I'm gonna be stapling the piece of plywood on, on the back here. Uh, I used a chalk line uh, just to snap it back here uh, because it's only five eighths inch MFD, and I don't wanna miss it. I don't wanna mess everything up by, by missing the center point. So just a quick uh, chalk line. Uh, I'll be using staples. So I'm using three quarter by one quarter, uh, 18 gauge staples that, that fit into my central mnemonic. Uh, it's both a nailer, combination of a nailer and a stapler. You can get this at Harbor Freight. Uh, you can see the link in the description below as well. Okay, here I'm prepping the threaded rods. They came in 10 foot sections. I, I, I need them cut though to eight feet. I simply used my cordless hacksaw uh, to do this. They cut them easily. So uh, measuring them, they, they had to be the exact height of the ceiling in order for this to work. So these are hanging shelves. So the thread of rod go up above the rafters uh, in the attic. So I, I'm drilling through here. I carefully measured and the holes ended up being exactly where I needed them to be. Okay, I got the assistance of a neighbor uh, simply to help me uh, get the, the, the shelves up uh, in place to line up with the holes. Uh, we then used a floor jack uh, to lift up the floating shelves. Okay, I'm up in the attic. You can see the thread of rods coming in here. here you know, this is the, the corner here by the garage, so two there and, and two tucked back there. I just had some scrap, uh, two by 12 and, and two by 10s. I used my, I used my cobalt hacksaw, it worked really well. I was able to modify these, uh, drill down, and so now I'm just gonna see if it, uh, if it fits. Okay, I put the, put the boards in place and realized that my holes were off slightly, so I had to drill two more holes on this piece. The back corner, though, was a precise fit, which always makes you feel good. Uh, not shown here, but I also put some, some leg bolts uh, just around the, the edges to make sure that everything was flat. Okay, there it is in place. It's very secure, very solid. I'm really pleased with how the threaded rod worked. Now it's time to, uh, to load it up with uh, things that I use almost every week. Now I've always had lack of storage space for things like this. So this is two inch PVC. Uh, cut off. Uh, so the space up here is it's high up there, but it's perfect for pieces like this. And behind there, I have plenty of room for uh, an eight foot uh, tall piece or a four by eight plywood or whatever. I can slide it behind there. Okay, it's been a week since I finished this project. Uh, it really turned out well. I, I love um, how I have uh, extra storage space here uh, behind the shelves. So the shelves are seven inches deep and there's another seven inches here that goes all the way to the top. So I have some MDF there that'll, that'll be for uh, upcoming shelves here in Scott's Garage. I have some two by fours back there as well. And uh, I also have room underneath uh, for floor jack and, and, and jack stands. You may ask, why did I go all the way to the floor? Well, I want this open like that. And like when I clean out the garage, blow it out, I don't want anything on the ground. I also, in the future, uh, want to use epoxy paint for the entire floor of the garage. And I just want everything uh, lifted up. Uh, a few more things to point out. Um, so when I position this, you can see that, you know, here's the garage rail. It's not right up to it. I left a gap of maybe an inch or so. 
and, and likewise on, on this side, I didn't go right up to the wall, but I, I left a gap there. Um, just thought that would be wise. Now, as far as the threaded rod, I did not buy the threaded rod at Lowe's. I bought it at a local hardware store. It's half inch threaded rod. It came in, in 10 foot uh, sections here. And I probably could have used 3 eighths, but I used half inch. Um, also, after a day, I went back up into the attic and I, I put the floor jack back on, uh, raised it uh, to the bottom here for support. I backed off the nuts and then I, I put uh, some thread lock on all the nuts, uh, both in the attic and then, and then also um, down here. Also, I forgot to point out that these boards that go all the way across on the bottom, there are two of them, they're studs. So they're not two by fours, they're studs, two by three. And you know that's where I ran the, the rod through. And then the upper board is just the 5 8 inch board, but likewise um, to, to guide those more. Initially, I had planned to put the threader rod on the inside of the shelves, but as I was putting it together, it just made more sense to put it on the outside. So this video is the first video on a playlist called Scott's Garage Makeover, where, where basically um, I make better use of space in this small garage. It's only 19 feet by 20 feet. Uh, double car garage uh, but this is again this is the first video uh, so look forward to other videos on this playlist now as far as this video if you got any value at all from this video please hit like it costs you nothing but it's of great value to me and as always have a great day